Welcome to American Radium. You are paid one cent per dial. Radium Girls is based on true events set in 1928 in New Jersey. Teenage sisters Bessie and Joe paint glow-in-the-dark watch dials at the American Radium factory. As Joe falls ill and the mystery of her disease unravels, Bessie befriends two young activists and, in a radical coming of age, she exposes a corporate scandal. I sat down with directors Lydia Dean Pilcher and Ginny Moeller for a first look. I'm Sari Cohen with Hollywood First Look Features. Joining me today is Lydia Dean Pilcher and Ginny Moeller, the directors of Radium Girls. Ginny, I want to start with you because this took place over a hundred years ago. So what made you tell this story at this point in time? I will say that this is, a, as soon as I read about this story, it kind of just grabbed onto me and still has never let go. I don't think it ever will. We, um, my co-writer Brittany Shaw and I were 24. We had been college roommates at film school. We were working as archival researchers, and one day I stumbled across a very obscure reference to the Radium Girl story, and it's one of those sort of crossroads moments where if I had just been like, I don't know what that is, and kept moving, I don't know, I don't know um, what would have happened, but what did happen was that I looked up the obscure reference and found the story that I had never heard about, and turned to her, I sent an email to everyone I worked with, <laughs> turned to her and I said, this happened. How did we not know about it? And um, and why isn't it, it a movie yet? We should make a movie and that, we should make a movie. And then that's how it started. Yeah, Lydia, I want to ask you, how did you come into the picture? Yeah, I have a company called Cinema Mosaic in New York City, and we produce a lot of independent feature films. And I'm an environmental activist and have been looking for a story where I could merge my you know, passions for the environment with my storytelling career. And so a friend told me about Jenny and Brittany's script and put me in touch. And when I read it, it just felt like it was the one. I've you know, been very interested in female storytelling and female stories forever. And it was a perfect way to, to um, you know, sort of make it all happen. Ginny, I want to ask you, tell me about piecing the cast together. What was that like? I mean, in piecing the cast together for, for Radium Girls, in so many ways, you know, obviously the sisters are at the heart of it. So Bessie and Joe and finding actors who had that type of chemistry where they're such different people and yet you know that they would do anything for each other and, and they do. So they're, they're the heart. And then at the same time, there's this incredible ensemble around them and sort of both like the good guys and the bad guys. Um, and what, you know, it's what's great about the bad guys is that they are acting as if they're the good guys. So really finding, um, finding a cast that could fill out that ensemble where you're really digging into that gray area for all of these characters. And um, and I think, I mean, for me, it was just, there was a lot of joy in that process because it's, there's so much joy in watching incredible actors do that type of work together. I wanna to ask you both because I know this took place, like I said, a hundred years ago, but there are so many things that are parallel to what's happening today. So. What can everybody learn from watching Radium Girls? Well, it's an, it's an interesting time right now because we're, you know, we're all very focused on an upcoming election. And one of the things about the Radium Girls story is that it was a lot of activist women in different realms of the early women's political movement and science and social movements like Jane Addams who really um, picked up on the Radium Girl story and really lifted it up into sort of a national profile, brought the media to it. And I think these were women who had gotten the right to vote not that long before and were really ready to use it now. And so, you know, worker safety and legislation around industrialization were big female causes, as you can see by Catherine Wiley, played by Kara Seymour head of the National Consumers League and she was in New Jersey. And it's just, it's it's these women that really lifted the Radium girls up to, so that their story did become of a significance that we could actually 
know about it today. Something that is so challenging for the Radium Girls is asking questions when people say, there's nothing here to question. And Bessie and Joe say, I feel like there's something here that's not right. And asking questions anyway. And for them looking at, and for us, looking at the origins of research. You know, scientific research is funded. Who is it funded by? Who has a stake in this? You know, there were legitimate studies that said radium was safe. Legitimate studies done by professionals who had powerful positions at established universities. But those studies were affected by the scientist's relationship with the radium industry. And so for us today, that's one of those things that's so, um, that's so tangible that we can do when we say, where is the truth in this? Well, like, let's look at the money. Like that's, that's so tangible and that's been happening for a hundred years and will continue to happen in that. And then, and then asking questions and raising our voice and, and finding, as Lydia was saying, those communities that are there to help people speak out. Thank you both for joining me today. You can check out Radium Girls in select theaters and virtual cinemas. I'm Sari Cohen. See you next time. Okay.